Hello, world. How's everybody today? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess it always okay. I have stuff to tell. Maybe bring it back just a little bit. I swear the numbers jump around every time I look at this thing. I mean, not that the meter's doing The meter's doing that, of course, but... That's not what I'm talking about. Um, I think I'm going to get a wire monitor. Just to have like... So, I, I never really did the two monitor stuff that much, because it always... Or when I did, it would be like one in the middle and then one over the side, but it still kind of didn't feel weird because I always want something like right where that crease is and I didn't want the crease in front of me. So, yeah, there's that. Anyways, uh, just messing around a little bit tonight. Um, the first thing I think I want to do... Oh, I need to up the font size there. Let's go 20 tonight. That's probably big enough. Ugh, it's so big. I did figure out, though, that you can detach. Um, my pants are completely messed up. There we go. Um, when you run in Pacharam, you can completely detach this window, which is awesome. Uh, ooh, we can throw it over there, too. I didn't even think about that. Be neat if you could size that window differently. But that's okay. That's good enough for now. Um, because let me see what's going on. Actually, I guess you can probably do this, right? That's ridiculous. But awesome. Still get it on stream. That's actually not bad at all. Oh, if only that would have a different size. Pie charm. Different size. Font for terminal. That's what I'm looking for right here. Check the code base and found that's provided for whatever. Just drop down menu for themes. Click save as. Save current theme as a different name. Now you can edit your font. That's not. Didn't understand the question. Font. It's too bright in here tonight. Console font. Use console font instead of default. Oh. Is this really good to work? Look at that. Y'all won't be able to read that as much, but that's awesome. Gold pie charm. A bunch of stuff. Okay, yeah, so anyways, first thing to do. I've got a thing where I'm working on at work where I've got dates coming in that are in basically an ISO format. They come in looking like this. Like that. It looks that's a lot like ISO 8601, but it's not quite. 8601. I just said it out loud for the first time, I think, ever. Yeah, 8601, I think that's right. Um, so they're not... Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I'm going to do the thing. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah. You can just kind of... Post in here. That's cool. Hang on a second. I'm going to... Uh. 
That's cool. My, uh, I'm in a Discord. It's kind of neat because that's my little icon or whatever. That is totally stolen. I should get somebody to paint me one like that. Uh, we'll get to that EC2 stuff in a second, or EFS stuff in a second. I think that's what I said, EFS, yeah. Um, but so anyways, these, the dates come in like this. The problem with that is it's not really 8601. The second problem with it is that it's not only is it not 8601, it's Eastern time. So it's kind of not representative of what's actually happening. Like it's, everybody does this, makes perfect sense, right? But um, what I would prefer having happen is it actually come in with an actual 8601 time frame, right? ISO 8601. Everybody's favorite. Uh, it's funny, and actually my sample here isn't right either. There should be a... I swear it didn't used to require uh, a colon right there, but it does now. Um, hour, minute, second, yeah. Uh, so this, this is the format that I'm going for right here. Um, and then what else, and then the second thing that I wanna do is I wanna convert that into uh, UTC time so that I can uh, put it in a database and have it like know that it's there. So I need to, I, I want it, it needs to come in. I wanna go ahead and actually convert the time into a, uh, something that has the, the capability of knowing what time zone it's in. And then from there, flip it to UTC so that I can get it and actually do something with it and not be freaked out about it and about time zones and all the other stuff. Um, so anyways, I was just making a little test run here. Um, let's see if this comes back up. Nope, doesn't bring that back up. Um, so this is kind of a mess. And this is a, a little piece that I wrote where I test stuff in the same file, just because why not? Uh, um, just makes it a little easier to kind of mess with sometimes. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. Um, so the first thing I want to do is actually get my expected values right. Um, 11, 12, so we'll do it at 15, 34, 13. Sure, why not? And yeah, so all I'm doing, and actually I can just back all the way through this for a second. So the way that I do test stuff, and I'm just gonna start over. I'm gonna save those values though, so, um, is we make a test case and then def test UTC from uh, yeah, so I, I, I know that I need to do, I want to do two tests with this. One that has a time that started in daylight savings time, and then one that has a or date that's not in daylight savings time, that's in standard time, because I want to make sure that the math goes properly. I'm going to have to actually figure out the math as part of this, but um, that's what part of this is about. So, um, daylight time uh test utc from time zone daylight yeah so expected and the way that i do this is uh Can't do that while I'm typing. Is I do uh, kind of what? Oh, why didn't that go green? That should have been green. Why didn't that go green? I thought that would have shown up green. Oh, because it's using PyCharm's unit test instead of mine. There's a way around that. I know there is. I, so I've got, if if I run this on my terminal, uh, toolkit scratch pad maybe? Yeah. Uh, how about this? Which one are we in? Add time, yeah, okay. 
Python add ISO. Python 3 add blah, blah, blah. So it actually goes green if the test is green, because I've got, I built this little, um, what's my thing? Uh, my own little test framework here. Not framework, but test, uh, whatchamacallit, test case, test loader, test module, test whatever, test runner, that applies color to the stream if things work. And I don't know why it's not working here. And it should be showing up as green. I am frustrated that it's not. I'll have to figure that out at some other point. So anyways, because the and the, the reason I like that is it's precognitive abilities to see the color. So I can see the color out of the corner of my eye without like if it's green, I don't have to look over there. Like if, if my brain sees green, it's like it's cool. Raise this up just a little bit. But now I have to go look at it to see, oh wait, it's red. Oh no, it's actually okay. Like that, that's not necessary. I've got another module I'm working on to actually try and solve that, but uh, we're not there yet either. So anyways, what I do is I, I build tests and I do a, a pretty strict green, red, green. Like this is my practice recently. Um, I'm not super great at this stuff, but that's how I'm getting better at it. So um, the, oh, I do kind of need this back down here because it's going to keep yeah, crap. Okay, we're gonna have to put that back. Because we need to see it. It was worth a shot. You mode doc pinned. There we go. All right. It'd be great if I could put it like right here. I don't think you can. Oh, wait a minute. Move to, oh, look at that. You get there, PyCharm. It's gonna confuse me without seeing the file structure there, but that's okay. So here we go. Um, <laughs> really, I'm digging PyCharm, I like it. Uh, so, the way I do that is, so the next thing I do is just run, I see if the thing can compile, so I just try and call the um, UTC from time zone. This is gonna fail, right? Cause that doesn't exist yet. Need that to stay down there though. All right. So if we just define that, we're passing again. Wish it would stay down there. Uh, so that's cool. We're good. And then what we can do is now what I want to do is actually use it. So that's going to fail. All right, right now I'm just looking to see test failed up here instead of going all the way down to the bottom. But so now we're just going to return the value that it wants and now it's passing. So then let's get the real value that we're after, which is gonna be this. Nope, sorry, what's gonna be? Uh, 11, 22, 33. So, uh, Now here's the other question I need to decide right now is, yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with the plus and the zeros because that mat that way the format matches. And if I put it in the database and some of them haven't been converted yet, I, the the value will be there. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. Now that's gonna fail because the expected's different. No problem. Now we've got this. Now it's, we know what we're gonna go for. So 
The other thing I need to bring up now is time.gov. So UTC time. Okay, 9.55. is 2.55 the following day. I didn't think about that. Oh, uh, this just got more complicated, maybe. I don't know, we'll see how it handles it. Uh, nine, so that's 2100 hours. Eastern Standard is two UTC the following day. All right, we're not going to deal with the overnight case yet. Um, but it's going to be, so that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2, right? So it's five hours. So if our starting UTC, no, wait. Starting Eastern Standard is January 2nd, and so we're going to subtract 5 from it, right? So 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. So this would be O six. All right, so let's get that in there as our target now, because right now it's going to fail. Now we're going on with this, and there's our pass. Okay, so. Put this in a variable so we can return it good. There you go. All right, so now the two things that we need to pass to this are um, timestamp and time zone. And time zone, we're gonna use, here we go, America, New York. So this is gonna fail because it's not expecting stuff to come at it. But we're gonna send stuff at it and I like being explicit, so. Timestamp, time zone. Now it should pass again. We're not doing anything with it yet, but we got it. All right, so there's our structure. Now we can do the math. My shirt is just not riding right, right now. Right now. Um, so the method that I've been playing around with today is Code runner, code runner. Um, is this pi zt, pi tz? Sorry, I got it backwards. Um, that lets you set a time zone. Which is going to be our time zone. So I've already done a, a fair amount of work on this. Um, and then we get a naive date time. Which I'm calling timestamp here, which whatever. Oh yeah, so ISO parse, sorry. We also need from date util parser. 
Oh, you know what I should do is put this down here. Because these are just for testing. So we've got our naive date time. And then we take our, wait, pi times, uh, yeah. Um, hmm, I probably shouldn't call that time zone. We'll call it TZ down here. Time zone equals our time zone there. And then let me just make sure we're all still passing here. Yep, still passing. And then we do TZ localize our naive date time. Just print that out and see what's in there. I think this should be, I just failed. Ooh, that's bad. All right, it fail. That makes sense. Now it's passing. You can't print? Something explodes in there. Not naive date time TV info is already set. So ISO parse. Oh, 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 I'm sending in, yeah, because I'm sending in time zones with it. That's, this is the wrong. Um, starting Eastern string doesn't have a time zone with it, right? Let's try that. There we go. Yeah, and so there's, oh, there it is, right? 11 to, right. And so this is the Python date object format. So that's cool, we're with that. So we've got this. Now what we need to do is get that to UTC, which is gonna be how? I don't think I did that yet. to UTC, whoops, UDZ, it's kind of like UDC. How to convert local date time to UTC in Python. <laughs> I'm sure this has been done before. I just want to have it as like one little thing for a string. Like for my specific use case, I want that method and I haven't seen that yet. I'm sure it's out there. This is probably the post that I got most of this off of. Yeah. So, yeah, it says as time string. So, I forget what the. is DST, I mean, it is daylight savings time, but. It's ignored for most night times. It's only used during DST transition ambiguous periods to resolve ambiguity. I'm just gonna leave it alone right now. My stuff is not that critical.
Yeah, okay, so then... Time zone. Time zone localized native date time. So this is, or naive date time. So this is time in time zone. And then UTC time. Time and time zone. Okay, so let's just see if this compiles. Yeah, it compiles. So now, if we hide that, one test failed. Wow, wow. Oh, because this is still a date time object. Ah. So I'm gonna get back to green, just because I want to make sure that I'm still still golden there. So I've got that, and then. UTC date time. I didn't realize I should call this UTC string is what I'm doing, but we'll get there in a second. UTC time equals UTC date time ISO format. And then I know that I want to have, I don't want to have I want to deal with milliseconds. If they happen to come in, they won't for what I'm doing, but I just want the thing to be okay with it. Uh, so we need to do a T as a separator, which is already there. This just replaces it. And then we do seconds here. So if we run this, it still compiles. If we drop this and we run this, we did not make it work. That is hard to see. Oh, here we go. Expected. Actual is 16. They went five up instead of five down. Did I do the math wrong? At Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's fi it's five up. So if I pass, if I pass eleven, it's gonna go up to sixteen. That makes sense. There we go. Right, because it's UTC is five hours ahead of Eastern. I flipped that. Knew that was gonna happen. Okay, so that's for a day. No, that's standard. No, yes, it's standard. Let's run that. Yeah, okay, cool. Adds the chosen time zone and returns returns a UTC string. I know I should do that in a doc thing or whatever, and I may do that in a minute, but I'll go back and forth on those. 
Okay, so that's test one, so that's cool. That's that's working. And hopefully. Standard time and daylight time. We'll be explicit even though the names are long. So these are the same tests, so they should both work, right? But now we're going to go to July. This should fail by an hour. Yep, 16 and 15. Because the daylight, so the module is doing the proper calculations of the dates to know if it's daylight saving time or it's not. Um, and so that's what I want to make sure it's happening is the UTC stuff. Because it 11 a.m. Eastern time in June or July, it's four hours off of day, off of UTC versus now in November, it's five hours off. So I want to make sure that both of those are caught. So that that's the test cases for that. Now, the other one is going to be, let me get rid of this. Here's the one I'm nervous about, because if this doesn't work, it, it means work. Crossing day. So if we do 21, this is where we ran into a minute ago, right? It goes to two, but on the following day, let's bring this back to 11 right now, just cause we're in November. Why not? Cross your fingers. No results are found. I exploded something. What did I do? It's angry right here. Oh, is this a, I think I see what's happening. It is a indentation error. So you're telling me that right there. I don't know why it's an indentation error. It seems like it should have picked it up probably. Okay, that'll probably work. Following day. So we're gonna go to 21. 06, following day in November, November. Please work. Did not work. Part of it is that that's the part. Now it's a different error. Q is not equal to six. Oh, 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 wait, it worked. I just had the math wrong again. I just put the wrong math in. Yay. 21 goes to two. Hour 21 goes to hour two following day. Sweet. That's it. Okay. That's what I need. Oh, why did it just break? I didn't do anything. It was just green. 
21 goes to two. Run. Now it's passing. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, oh, crap. There's another test that wasn't passing. How does that happen? That is the thing that frustrates me about PyCharm sometimes. Expected 16, got 15. Oh, oh, oh. I backed when I was undoing. I hit that one. Because this is 16 for daylight. For standard, this is 15. Okay. Work, please. Tests passing. All three of them. There we go. Okay, so that's it. That'll let me throw stuff at it, and it'll be cool. It's kind of a lot right there, but whatever. Um, that's exactly what I need. Sweet. And then, what was the other one I was going to do? Add ISO time zones. Where's my, this thing? Add ISO 8601 time zone. So that's really, let's call that something different. First, let's get rid of a bunch of these. Remove this. We're gonna rename this to date time stuff. in here and then get rid of this because they're all gonna have tests eventually or they won't so add 8601 times that's not actually what this one's doing but we want to do that too um This one is to ISO eighty six one UTC. And then what we need, we do need one more here, which is going to be add ISO 8601 time zone. Ah. It's going to be a lot of the same stuff. Uh, so we're just going to copy all this and paste it and then because that gets us most of the way started that just gets all the imports and stuff in there because we're gonna use the same stuff um okay so def test Add ISO A601 time zone. One of these days, I'm gonna remember that I have this set up to do that. So test, just make sure we're green. Yep, okay. So what we're gonna be looking for is 2020 11, 22, how about 01, 02, at 11, 22, and 33 seconds with, actually, I do want to see that now because I just want to grab one, uh, convert. Oh, that's going to UTC. We're just plus zero, so we need the minuses. Minus, minus, minus. Is it? See, I've actually, this is 
I've kind of already got this. I just want to get one in my collection uh, and have it uh, whatevered. Um, O5. Uh oh. this in here make sure we're passing everything's good cool now I'll call it so add ISO 8601 time zone this will fail because it doesn't exist I like making sure that tests actually fail like it's, you know get red before you do green so now we're just compiling there we go now I actually call it That'll fail. Time string equals that. Return. Time string. This should pass. Yeah, so now we can do the work. Um, So we're largely, and then so what we're going to do is timestamp equals start time stamp, which doesn't exist. We're going to create that real quick. And so this is just going to be the data without the, um, without the string on it. Oh, and I guess you do need to give it a time zone, right? I was, when I was first doing this, I was doing it explicitly for one that I have. Um, or where I was just hard coding the, uh, the time zone effectively. Ooh, look at that. All right, time zone equals time zone. Timestamp, and might as well just call it timestamp. Probably better words for that, but. So that's gonna fail because doesn't like it. We're passing arguments to it. Now it should pass because they it's coming in even though it's not doing anything with them. And so now we can do the math. And again, I'm just gonna go back and steal most of this stuff. So naive, whoops, that didn't work. Naive time zone. It's almost all this except for the conversion. Naive time equals ISO parse state time zone. We get the time zone. Time and time zone. This is really the time string right here. Nope, it's not. Time and time zone. I think we just take that out. All right, let's see if we're still compiling at least. Yeah, okay. And run it. Got it. There you go. Like I said, I've, I did most of that stuff before, so I didn't have to 
to go through it. This is all um, lining it back up just to get a solid, like good solid samples. And I'll put these in my uh, uh, in my little book here too in a minute. Um, but I do want to test. So the other one that we need to test right is daylight. Eastern daylight, which would be seven. And so this goes to a seven as well. And this becomes four hours off. I'm going to run it once. We should see it go four because I want to see it fail to make sure it's it's really failing. So there it is. And yeah, minus five hours, minus four hours, which is expected. So now we fix the test, basically. Uh, that gets us a red and a green. Um, and so I guess the other one to do... Yeah, so there's, there is no le like need to leap over things. This is just basically just assigning this. And really, it's just assigning that based off whether or not it's daylight savings time. But something else does all that magic, so I don't have to worry about it. Um, so that gets that. Uh, which is sweet. Oh, I'm going to do this one while I'm thinking about it. Curl IP address. So, where'd it go? Oh. Curl, what is my IP? This is one I need to remember. Or I don't necessarily need to remember it, but like, if you do, uh, oh, whatever, you get it. Um, whoops. I just did the wrong thing. Um, what am I doing? Uh, bo, 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 bo. Oh, yeah, you can use that to get your IP address. CLI. Curl. Get. What is my IP? There's actually a few of them. Ah, whatever. Good enough. Now what we want to do is pi. Date and time. Date and time. Add ISO 8601 time zone. So we're going to add this. Is down here. Oh, I guess. No, you would need to have all the rest of the stuff up there. Whatever, it's fine. Cool. So there's that one. ISO 8601 UTC. So I just like having all these things lined up for me.
doesn't have the time zone. Pass the time zone and return UTC. ISO 8601 string. I think I missed one, yep. And we need these for the tests. It's probably a way to just make that happen, but. Oh yeah, I guess I could just move all that stuff down below, right? If it doesn't need to be there. That's the run. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. I guess we can use a sample there to show how to use it too. String equals that. Nope, keep it on the dirt lines. Somewhere down here. There we go. So this is the convert one. So we'll run here. I really like that. One of these days I want to get like a combination of MV Alt here, which is the super fast finding stuff with like PyCharm and like Code Runner or maybe Code Runner. Cause like Code Runner, you don't have to like save, like you can just like run a file and Jupyter Notebooks, like kind of mush all that stuff together and make like one book of magic grimoire. Um, add. So now we can grab this. So this is cool. I like this. this is all solid. Typo and word time string. Time S T R I N G. Really? Okay. Uh, but we can move this now down here. Those up top, right? Yeah, feeling. All right, whatever. Ah, yeah, I like this style for snippets. Of course, you really could just make two files, but. I kind of like it like this because I like being able to copy it back out of my notebook and have it be there. I guess you do two files in there. Eh, whatever. It's fine. Um,
Well, we could just do this right here. And somewhere down there, there it is, cool. Yeah, I definitely can go back and forth on that, but I really kind of like having it all in one file um, to be able to run it. It's And sometimes I've used that before, like as a safety mechanism when I've had code that I wasn't totally sure of some, working on somebody else's machine, like it actually runs the tests first and then in there you can like test and make sure stuff exists or whatever. Cool, okay, so that's that, I got those. Um, just already up that one, that's cool, I like that one. Give that a vote too. So let's get on back here. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is try and figure out how EFS works. Um, I've got, and I may just play with it and see if I can do it, how it works. Um, it's very complicated is what it is. Visibility zone, EC2 instance, network interfaces. Your EC2 instances in the VPC have file systems mounted. Yeah. Each has one mount target. We recommend that you access the file system from a mount target within the same availability zone. Makes sense. Create your EC2 instance. Creating the setup works as follows. Create your EC2 instance and launch your EC2. Okay. Create an EFS, connect your EC2 and mount the EFS file system. For detailed steps, go here. All right, so let's make a EC2 instance. I may have to uh, have to downsize the font there a little bit so I can actually see what's going on. Okay, launch instance. Uh, we're actually gonna do, eh, whatever, we'll do this one, it's fine. And we'll just do one of the micros. This is just a test. So I don't need it to be public. Placement group, okay, whatever. Actually, let me look at the steps. Assumptions related to talk about. Create a file system, create your Oh, whoops, okay. So I gotta create the file system first. Create file system. Make it the default VPC. I need to learn more about this stuff. Okay. 
Amazon creates mount targets with the following settings. Mount target availability zone. Look at that. Uh, uh, Filing system has been created. Link to ask us file system. Details when file system is available. So here's our file system. 6K. Create our EC2s. Number of instance one, purchase options, default settings. File system. Make sure the EFS file system that you created in step one is selected. Did not do that. Disable. Where did file system go? File system. Add a file system. Test file system. There you go. I mounted EFS. FS1. To enable access to the file system, the required security groups will be automatically created and attached to the instance. Okay. In the selected file systems mount targets to manually manage your security groups. Okay. Is that going to be it? Uh... Data automatically includes mounts. Add storage, add tags, configure security groups. Assign a security group, select existing. Choose the default security group to make sure that it has access to EFS. You can access your thing by Shakur Cell using the security group. SSH access isn't required for this exercise. To add it, you can edit the default security and add a rule to allow SSH. Or you can create a new security group that allows SSH. You can use the following SSH. Alright. So we don't need this because we're actually going to use that. Tags, it's fine. Wait a minute, this is different. Set a in security group configuration, set assign a security group to select an existing security group. Choose a default security group to make sure that it has default. What are the rules of this? Oh, all traffic. Oh, from the source of itself. Okay, yeah, so I'm just now getting my head around that. So anything that's in the default can talk to the default. And then, so I want these two, because that way I can SSH into it. Because I don't have it set up for that console stuff yet, which may be what we're about to do too. Review and launch. Launch. Boxes are still hanging out there, huh? Should have given it a name.
Uh, SSH I. SSH. Greenfield key. EC2 user at IP. It may not be all the way up yet. I don't think it's all the way up yet. File using quick setup, yeah. This is the one that lets you do um, connect to it from their console. You can edit quick setup configurations for your account in time. Permissions roles. I need to read all the way through this, which I'm not gonna do right now. I'm a little bleh right now. But this basically lets you update systems manager agent. Okay, yeah. I just wanna have a role on the EC2 instance that lets you connect to it from the Amazon, from the web console, basically. All right, now I'm wondering. Is it alive? Oh wait, was that a 172? Oh, that's not gonna go anywhere. There's no public IP address on it. Wah -wah. Wait, why are those stopped? We can actually terminate those. All right, won't let you do it all at the same time. Terminate. I thought I stopped all, I thought I killed all those last night, or the other night. Uh, and we can kill this one. Nope, come on. Because it needs to have a... Public IP address on it, so I can actually test this. Configure... Okay, auto assign public. Yeah, let's do it this time. What do you say? File system. Yep. Automatically create and attach the required security groups. See? To enable access to the file system, the required security groups will be automatically created and attached to the in to this instance and the selected file systems mount targets. EFS test two. So it didn't give me. Uh, that's going to be them. NFS. That one doesn't have any rules in it. That's kind of weird. So that's going to be for EFS. Source. Oh, oh, okay. Instant security group one, EFS security group one. Okay, so this goes to the EFS drive. Can we see that?
wonder where it shows you network, maybe. Security? Where does it show you security? Security groups. EFS, yeah, okay, so it automatically assigns that. So that 0973, 0973, okay, yeah, so that automatically gets applied. Then you just need to apply this to the FS, to the EC2 instance, so that it has, so that this sees its source as something coming from that security group. Got it. Got it, got it, got it, I think. We'll find out in a minute. Uh, house access. We want the instance. Oops. What was the other one we were to do? Wasn't default. Nope. Uh. Allow all about traffic. I think it defaults to that. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, review and launch. Let's see what happens. Try it again. Survey C is. Should be dying. Terminated with extreme prejudice. Running. Okay, here we go. Public IP address. Let's try that. SSH. I forget what I stands for. EC2 user at IP address. Yes. Mount EFS. Did I put the file system on there? I feel like maybe I didn't. Crap. Storage. Block devices, volume. EFS volume on there. All right, one more time. I'm just looking to see. If it says EFS in there anywhere, it does not. I would figure it would say it under storage somewhere here. Terminate, one more time. Launch instance. I always feel like they're gonna yell at me for, uh, or like, whatever for bringing up and killing boxes, but like, it's kind of their thing. Add file system. So it's there, I did do this. Mount, EFS, FS1. All traffic from its own security group probably would help. I'm having massive deja vu right now. Oh, wait a minute. I just made another one. 
I'm gonna add them both. To enable access to selected file system, the following additional security groups will be created and attached to your resource. Instant security group include no inbound rules and an outbound rule that allows traffic. Oh, okay, so there probably was an outbound rule. You can't tell on this. <sighs> Amazon. Where do I see the outbound rules? The security group has no rules. That's unclear. Okay, so there's, it's doing an outbound thing. I, but I turned it on. I thought, whatever. Here. Default all outbound. I just want to do like a tone test and see if this works. Yeah, all the security groups. Wait, there should be a uh, backup. No, oh, right, there you go. House access. Okay, that should definitely do it. Oh! -ha -ha! Redraw failed tasks. Remember I was talking about how they're going to yell at me for starting too many machines? That's what just happened. I wonder what the timeout on that is. <sighs> That's a bummer. All right, one more time. We'll see how it goes. Oh, that was for a specific type. I wonder if I try a different type. Let's do a C something. This is more expensive, but... I'm looking for, like, tiny. They're all large. Metal. Also bad. That's funny, they're all large. A's. T, let's try a T3 micro. Okay, there's that. Add the file system. Add storage, whatever. So, yeah, okay, so yeah, so the that second time through, it must not have done it, because this is three then. So it really needs to be the instance. So they don't show you that that has an outbound rule yet. Yeah, that's instant security groups. Include no inbound rules and an outbound rule to allow traffic over 90, 40, or 40, 20, 49, whatever. File system mount target security groups include an inbound rule that allows traffic, which is this one. From the instant security group above. An outbound and an outbound rule that allows traffic over whatever. So it should just be this and this. I want to try and stick with the minimum. Review and launch. 
launch. Got it. Yay! They timed me back in. I'm sure some of that too is just to make sure you don't accidentally like script stuff and have it going, but like all the other instances were stopped, so I'm kind of surprised that that throttle hit that fast. I expect they have their reasons. All right, running. Third time's a charm. Oops. EC2 user at thing. Yes. Mount. Crap. Why isn't it there? The amount on Windows Server fails, access denied by server. Mount command fails. Mount command fails. Files system mounts immediately after. If I want using DNS name fails. Mount does not respond. Unmounting a file system fails. None of those are what's happening. refreshed. Alright. Hang on a second. Ready to go. Open up these security groups a little bit. Traffic default. Reboot. Kind of wish those other ones would go away. Whoa. I just made them go away. That reboot already? That was fast. Still 65, yeah. That rebooted very fast. There it is, okay. to see I guess is this it reporting that it's got oh 8e I think that's exabytes yeah for mount at EFS1 so like I got plenty of space that's cool I have to look and see how much space costs there So hang on a second. Let's. I want to see because I don't understand why that didn't work. Let's look at these security groups one more time. So I'm going to take default out. Oh, it automatically added this one.
I didn't see four as an available option. I wonder if it, what it was saying there, that like it takes it a minute to actually push the thing down. Security groups. Oh, yeah, it keeps adding all these security groups to it. Right, 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 right. Yeah, here's one, here's two, here's three. Yeah, four wasn't there on that option. So I think that rebooted. Okay, so I think that's what it was. It just hadn't cleared through yet. That makes sense. Okay, so that's how you do FS, EFS. Sweet. Because what I'm thinking about doing is downloading a bunch of videos onto an EFS volume with one low cost machine and then processing them with a higher cost machine. Because um, I don't want the higher cost just sit there doing network stuff, even though it's not doesn't take that much time, it's still time. So uh, that was my thought there. Uh, I still kind of wish those would go away. But that's cool for now. Um, I like it. So we can actually stop this one because we're not going to use it anytime soon. Whoops, maybe. Oh, that was the wrong one. Heh. Stop instance. Yes, please. Cool, okay. Uh, and what does EFS cost? Standard storage gigabytes per month is 30 cents. Okay, so I'll be okay. Uh, infrequent access is 0.025, wow. So I can just leave that thing running and it'll be fine. Sweet, okay, uh, cool. Uh, I think that's going to do it for tonight. A little, a little on the tired side. I was up a little late last night doing some other stuff. And now it's, uh, now it's time to maybe go to sleep a little bit. So, see y'all. Have a good one. Take it easy. Next time.